Hello, I'm Edwin Becker, head of exhibitions of the Van Gogh Museum. And uh, I have to tell that the idea for the exhibition, Illusions of Reality, Naturalist, Painting, Photography and Cinema, came up a couple of years ago when, together with guest curator Gabriel Weisberg, we were discussing a new topic for an ex exhibition. And I think uh, it could be really an eye opener, this exhibition, for a lot of purposes. Because uh, it's not only about painting, naturalism is anyhow a new field, it's a, a new area which has still to be discovered in painting. But I think the link with both photography and also cinema makes it even more interesting. And the whole exhibition and the making of the exhibition has been a wonderful experience. Not only did we have the chance to visit a lot of places, to discover a lot of archives, to do a lot of research, because most of the paintings were hidden and most of the photographic material was put away or kept in dark cellars. But also, um, during the research, it became clear that there is a direct link with now. And I think that makes the exhibition even more fascinating. Because when you do an exhibition, you would like to have the value for today. I mean, what does it say uh, to the today's audience? Does it still have some appeal? And I think that also the symposium about naturalism, about the raw reality, as it is called, uh, can bring a new insight in not only the art movement, but also in nowadays, for example, uh, social history, photography, and nowadays cinema. And for the exhibition, uh, we were also trying, of course, to, to have a logical order in the exhibition itself. And uh, of course, as has been stated before by Gabe Weisberg, you can't think of naturalism without Emile Zola. So Zola has to be presented first. And for the exhibition itself, uh, it was difficult to, to start an exhibition on painting, photography, and film, and then introducing first also literature, which most of the visitors uh, can find rather boring. And you know, if, if you had to read long text panels, how do you uh, visualize this? But at least Zola and, of course, the novels like Germinal, like La Terre, like Nana, about prostitution, about all these experts, about alcoholism, about uh, mining strikes, had to be visualized. And here you see on the uh, left a photograph, which is in the introduction of Zola sitting himself on the haystack, which we found very appealing as an introduction for Zola. And also pointing out that Zola was photographed at the time. Um, and of course, you know, through posters, through various uh, uh, media, we could show how this influence was on painting, of course, but also on, on posters for theatre performances, for posters for film performances. Here, for example, there is an, uh, um, uh, how do you say, an indication of, of Zola uh, as a repetitive story, an ongoing story in the magazine Gilles Blas. Or here, for example, an announcement for Germinal. And uh, as Gabe told you, it was very difficult to, to stage uh, Germinal, of course, because of the mine strikes and the huge upheaval of people. I mean, how could you visualize that uh, uh, on stage? So the next step, the film, was much easier to do and to, to attract mm -hmm. people with and to, to, to address yourself to the public than in the theater performance. And we actually have, through Jean-Francois Rosier, also the original cameras which he was using, really showing that Jules Alexis Meunier was a photographer himself, not only uh, to use photography for, uh, like here, sort of depicting the rural countryside, which was disappearing, which he also felt was disappearing, but also to use photographs like here, as an example for the construction of his painting. So here is himself, the artist, painting on the basis of these photographs he did himself. And then this is the result, the actual painting now in a private collection. It was very nice to have the private owner here and seeing his painting transferred from the dining room to our um, uh, new wing. And Emerson is also included in the exhibition because 
he talks about naturalist photography. He calls this as a sort of tool, a source book uh, for naturalistic photography, where you see that there is this other influence. This is the painting influence on photography. And then with the uh, painting, we decided to have first, as Zola is the grandfather for our literature, uh, Bastien Lepage is sort of the forerunner and, and the godfather for naturalist painting. And we're very happy to have uh, this beautiful picture from Milwaukee. I mean, there are some in, in, in French collections, but uh, the Musée d'Orsay one is, is really a, a top-notch painting which they don't, don't lend. Uh, so we had the chance to have this particular piece where you really can see that there's this, this juxtaposition of the, the main character, the main figure, burdened by his, his heap of, of, of trees, and then the swirling girl in the corner. And, and as she's turning around, this is like what we call a sort of snapshot, a sort of frozen moment. Uh, and, and as an onlooker, you have the feeling that she can jump out of the, the picture. So this is what, what, what we call sort of lifelike appearance of the static figure in the middle in contrast with the uh, little girl picking the flowers in the corner. French photography, all showing the rural life uh, not so much the idyllic side of it, but just the hard labor. And then I'll jump over to youth, another chapter in the exhibition. So we were really picking up themes which we thought of and also which we could see were important at that time for naturalist uh, painters as a subject. 